so to get started, uh, I started trying to think of like what what is the most optimal like if there was one thing that you should learn out of this entire thing, the f the most important one is actually uh, command and shift and question mark, which you 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 welcome just jam alongside. But what that does is it brings down the search thing. Um, and that allows you to search for any command that you want. So let's say you're in Safari, so you would do like command shift question mark and say new. And for me, it would ask me a question to put my passwords in. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, do that again. So like, if, say I wanted to open a new tab, but I didn't know what the command was. I would just use that. And by, by doing that, that gives me the ability to stay entirely in the keyboard without having to move to a mouse to go up to the menus and look around, but to actually control a lot of the stuff that I want to do instantly. And by using like, the way I'm thinking about it rather than uh, and memorizing a specific thing and then jumping to something from that. Um, this pattern is uh, common, so oh, sorry, I'm going to try and use Chrome because I know you all use Chrome. So. Uh, so let's go docs.google. So one of the interesting thing here is that Google Docs also does the same thing. Uh, no, it's this one. I really don't know half my passwords. Which is, a, everyone should not know their passwords. Let's auto artsy mail, there we go. Cool. Uh, yeah, no, I even did all that with my with the key commands too. Okay, so <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> in case you wondered what the key command for one password is, it's command and slash. So a uh, backslash. So it's the one that's next to shift. Um, it will it will pop it up in the side, a bit like this. Wait, is it the one next? To, uh, it's the one next to return. So it's above to return on your keyboard and next to it on my keyboard because we're British. Um, you can actually use that to jump straight into other websites too. So you could just start typing of like, uh, I don't know, Facebook. And it will actually let you jump to Facebook with the authentication page with those details put in straight away. Um, so that's a really nice way of jumping between web pages if you know exactly where you're going. But it's a bit of a weird one. I, I wouldn't think of doing it by default that way. Um, but the, the slash for the password, I use it all the time. Um, so. I, <laughs> got distracted, but that, that metaphor that I gave you earlier with the, the question mark, so command shift question mark that gives you the search for all menus, that actually also works inside Google Docs. So if you said uh, hello and wanted to set that to be a title, I believe it is alt and, um, alt and well, the lowercase version of the question mark, so backslash. Um, and that brings up the same kind of concept, so then you can then type in title, and suddenly you have applied title to your uh, text. So, and this, this, like, I need to stress that this is a useful one. These are like the ones that once you've got these down, then you suddenly start thinking, um, you know, how do I make a list? Well, suddenly you can start just doing it by not having to go and find it wherever it is in here. There it is. Um, and you get a lot out of just doing that. So they're the two key things. The, with those done, you can then start working on to like more of the like the meta things about the work that you're doing. So, um, so with the search, this, the two searches done. I'm gonna jump back to where we are and uh, auto. What do they call it? Keyboard shortcuts. Um, next up, I started thinking about um, how do you handle the, the kind of windows that exist on, site on your computer. So for example, if you wanted to open a new Chrome, that would be Command N for like new window. This is consistent among every single application. So let's say you were in like, uh, well, Excel's a good case. Excel would be Command N would open a new one. Um, the same as Finder, the same as Mail. Well, and that that's new Mail, I think, Command N. Um, but part of it is that if you always think of Command N as being new, then whatever the application expects is what you'll probably get. So I think in iTunes that would be like new playlist as opposed to like new window. 
but the metaphor generally stands for it usually being a new window. Um, command T then would be create new tabs. So when you're jumping between, so every time I've been creating new tabs, I just press command T and it's just opened up another tab. It's the same in Safari or anything, any single application that has tabs, that's usually what it, it is. So by proxy then, by knowing how to open uh, either a new window or to uh, a new tab, the opposite is command W. So it's like, I don't necessarily know why it's W. <laughs> um, it's like close window, but more importantly, it's not quit the application. So if you look at like something like Chrome, right? Right now, if you look at my setup, uh, I've got two windows and three tabs. So in this case, like, I could close just this window, but close this window and tab by closing the last window um, by doing Command W. But if I was instead, um, if I hit Command Q, that would close the entire application, which would totally kill all the windows in the screen. Um, well, let's get it back. Wrong. Fabulous. OK. Uh, all right, killed all my windows, fine. Uh, there we go, so we're back. Um, so there's a the general window management. It's command N, new window, command T, new tab, command, w, command W gets rid of them. Um, next up. Yes, I went straight then into like text management. So this is probably a good one for Google Docs. Um, so inside, uh, inside any like text editing, uh, Thing. So that could be a web page, that could be uh, like your notes app or Slack, things like that. Then there's consistent ways in which you can uh, copy and paste text and also really interestingly, consistent ways in which you can jump around inside that text. Uh, so is it going to be nice enough to give me some text now? Let me just grab some code. We'll cover all this kind of stuff. I'm just going to jam in some random text in there so I've got stuff to work with. Uh, it's not really what text looks like though, so it's, it's just copy and paste. <laughs> copy and paste some real text in. Okay, look, I got some real code, some text. Um, as you as you would expect, up, down, left, right does what you expect it to do. But um, holding Alt, for example, is the thing that you would use to jump between words. It doesn't do much between uh, like uh, it's a little bit confusing when you're using up and down, so. I, I don't actually ever use that for up and down, um, but for jumping between words, I do it all the time. So that one's useful for like let's say I wanted to I wanted to s the word selection there is a word that I would like to uh, highlight and then do something to. So the the way that I would get to it is I would use another another key command, which is if you hold command. It will, either, it will jump the furthest it can go in whatever direction you press. So that could be right to the top, right to the bottom, or right to the far left, or right to the far right. So if you jump to the right, yep, right, then you could jump back some words, and then you can hold select when you do the next uh, jump with alt. So select will just, whatever you do, if you're holding shift, sorry, did I say select? If you're holding shift, then any of the kind of uh, jumping around inside the text that you do, uh, it, will, it will highlight it. So that is useful for selecting the entire document, which like if you were at the top and you did shift command down, it would select everything versus uh, the same for from the bottom upwards. Or if you wanted to select an entire line uh, and then like work your way backwards or forwards, then holding alt and shifting left and right will, will be the right way to like jump and manipulate that text. Um, inside there, for example, uh, if you wanted to cut and paste, or like copy and paste, copy is command and C, so that one's easy. Cut is command and X, which is like, it's like copy but execute it, so like removes it in my head. And then V is paste, which I've got no idea why, why it's that, but it's really close to C. So it's really convenient for just like keeping your finger in the same place and then dropping it down on the next one. So it's, yeah, it's probably why they put them in the row. Um, on top of that, then, 
<laughs> it's nice, they're right in front of me while I'm discussing ours. <laughs> um, the other two useful ones, of course, are, are undo um, and redo. So command Z will always undo. So it will. The, the, the confusing thing here is, unlike most of the other commands that we've talked about, um, where they're very, um, they're very obvious what they do, like if you hold Alt and jump uh, and you know go across, then it will go across. Command Z, uh, Z, Command Z will. Um, you don't necessarily know what it's going to undo to, right? So it like undoing. I I've done a bunch of things inside here, but when I press Command Z, it actually jumps all the way back to something that I did maybe like five ten minutes ago. Um, so you just have that unpredictability that's different per application, and we all just have to live with it. But the good thing is then uh, that you can un undo it by redoing it, which is holding shift and doing the exact same thing. Um, so shift is generally a modifier. Uh, that's what we would call it when we're adding these keys, which is usually the inverse of what you do. So um, when you're trying, like, it's not like command N and holding shift would create it would undo it, but sometimes shift is used as like the thing that I just did, but the opposite. Uh, so when you're looking through key commands and you're like, why is it this way? That's generally why it's that way. Um, okay, text management. Okay, cool. So when you've got multiple uh, applications, um, one of the things one of the things that I do all the time is I use command tab to jump between apps. So that's holding command down and pressing tab. It has a really nice uh, feel. First of all, like you can jump to other applications really quickly, but it has this really nice uh, pattern. So let's say I had a Safari window open and a Chrome window open. If I press Command Tab once and just like did it really quickly, it will just jump between the last two apps that I've been working from, and, and that's really nice when you you know you you know that you're only doing two things again and again and again. And it's this like nice rhythm of jumping between two apps. It's really it's really quick. Um, tab, you're looking really confused at command tab. <laughs> so it's just because by default it, it it orders them by recent. So the first one here is Safari because that's the app I'm currently in. And then when I let go of, of command, then it will jump me back to here. Um, this is also what I use to close all my applications that are running. So as long as you're holding command, it, it won't go away. And so during that point, you can actually press Q, which will quit applications. Um, it won't quit the Finder, and I certainly can't quit any of the other ones at the moment. But So I've run out of applications to test them. Get one back up. Um, but that's, that's one of the, like, the key ways in which I shove a bunch of things off that I probably don't need to keep on my, on my screen anymore. Um, Let's open some more Chromes. So, in a way that's similar to how uh, we can tab between applications by Command Tab. If you look at the, I don't know, what, what would you call this? The apostrophe? Accent. The, squiggly the accent? Thing. Yeah, the accent and the squiggly thing. The one that's just above Tab, <laughs> right? It's there because it, it it's Tilda. used here because it's above Tab. Yeah. Tilde. Tilde. Well, it's like yeah, yeah. I'll take I'll take Tilde. So it's the tilde. The tilde is uh, just like the tab, but for your windows. So command tab takes you between applications. Command tilde takes you between windows. So jumping between them uh, gives you like the ability to, you know, you've you've got like a CMS window up, you've got an admin window up, you've got like Google Docs running over here. You you want to get back to one of those specific windows, then you would press command tilde a few times until the one that you want it is the one at the front. The nice one, right? Oh, thanks, man. Is there any way to merge the windows you have open to become different tabs on one single thing? That's a great question. Do you know how I would check? <laughs> no joke. Uh, I mean, it doesn't look like it, but one of the great things about this is you can actually, if you start using up, down, left, and right, you can jump through them all. Uh, but it doesn't look like it. And, uh, no. Yeah, but. manually, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, Keyboard failed us. I know. No, Chrome failed us. That should be a feature. Maybe Safari has it. I don't know. 
Yep, there it goes. Safari's got it. Merge all windows. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I know, right? Okay. Um, close that. All right. Uh, the next one, taking screenshots. Uh, this is something that uh, you actually have to use the mouse for, um, which is totally reasonable. But it's a really hard one to memorize um, because it makes no real sense. Uh, command shift four is the one I use, yeah. Free also exists, but it moves it into your pasteboard. So you press command V to paste it out. Yeah, exactly. I might have a. So it's like, this is nice because when you press it, it turns your mouse into a cursor. And so you can select and take the picture. Um, or if you, once it's there, you can press spacebar and it will turn it into window mode and it will only take a picture of that window. So depending on the level of elegance you want on your picture, uh, it will add the shadow around it too. So when you send it to someone, it looks very fancy. It looks like you put some effort in. Spacebar, yeah. Spacebar is a toggle between the two of them. So this is how I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Way! <Wait. laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got we got those. Um, all right, so let's we'll do it. We'll do a uh, a bit more of an advanced one on on text again. So um, there is the idea that you can search inside the current document, right? So like you want to find something. Uh, a nom <coughs> I assume normally you would go up and press edit. Nope, I don't even know. How do you? How would you find in this about? <laughs> exactly, I don't know any other way other than doing Command F. So Command F is is a great start, and if you're just doing that, life is fine. But you can you can improve this. So first off, like when you press Command F, uh, it does. You would have to type in whatever you've got. So technically speaking, the programmer term for this is the search buffer. So it just means a place where you put the thing you want to search. Um, so when you want to find something, you would press Command E and then oh, it doesn't work in Google Docs. What shocking! That's a standard that they're not doing. Uh, so maybe they have an equivalent. What would they do? Uh, find uh, no. Okay. So if you were in something other than Google Docs, so anything other than a website, um, so like, uh, what, I don't have any of those installed. <laughs> I've only got like programmery things. Uh, what have we got? Like mail, maybe? <laughs> so Slack's a great question. It might, but we can we can have a look. Like, this is funny. If you go to Chrome, it like it lists. Oh. It's not as far as I can well, I mean, that's that's exactly what it should be doing. Wait, how did you find that? Uh, edit find use selection for find. Oh. I wants to go to edit when I hit command. I don't even have it. Uh, for Chrome though, sorry, not for. I'm in Chrome. No, not for Docs. Oh, just in general. Well, okay, so then maybe Google Docs specifically doesn't have that. But that is, yeah, that is, as the standard is Command E will put it into your search thing. And then Command F would then automatically, like, find it. The, the, this one should probably be supported in there. So if I did, uh, what's in there? Will? Till? Two. Okay. Why can't I find a word that's like multiple times? Okay, so one of the things then is once you've got a search query that's actually found results, command G will take you into the next one. So my general pattern would be I want to find something. So I select it via the, the, the so I would select it the way that we selected things earlier. So I would jump to the word, uh, select it by holding shift and covering whatever. I'd press command E, which would normally put that inside this, the find uh, box. Then when I when it's in there, I can press Command G to jump between all the different ones I wanted to like, uh, to, between all the different matches that existed in the system. Um, and those are usually all the ones that I use around find. Um, and they're, they're usually pretty simple. Yeah, it works brilliantly on a web page. 
Um, it doesn't like the command E doesn't do anything, nope. but it does. If you command G, then it will jump you around. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So it's just like invisible. So it's it is if you're doing that on a web page, it is totally invisible. So and that's been part because you just you're just putting it in the search buffer, and I know I use that term, but like it actually means that it goes in every single app's like search thing. So any app that says that they have they've got a find or a search, that thing will stay in there between every single app. So that that word may be there in your mail app, it may be there in Safari, it may be there in Chrome, it may be there, well, it won't be there in Google Docs as we've learned, but it could be in a few other places. Um, so yeah, command G between all the different things then is. Uh, as my thing says, really useful. Um, okay, so that's searching between applications. Uh, to another one that's a little bit more advanced is uh, if you want to do text replacement, ugh, text te replacing text. As this doesn't seem to work in Google Docs, the command E stuff, then uh, it's not too useful, but it's worth knowing. Command E would normally put it in the search thing up there. And then command shift E would normally put it in the replace. So if you were going to replace text on a very large scale, you would do command E over the text that you wanted to find, change it, and then do command shift E. And then that would put the, the, the old one and the new one in automatically for you. And then you could just press replace all. OK, so the next one is um, going to be about like, finding things on your computer. So the simple one, the, the key command by default for this is command and spacebar. And it brings up this, uh, this little bar that's called Spotlight. Um, and so Spotlight is uh, arguably the fastest way to like, open a, uh, an application. And if you know exactly what you're going to open inside the application, it may be even faster to do that. So for example, let's say I was going to do some uh, design work on like the artsy open source stuff. So normally I would type in sketch, which would um, automatically bring up uh, the application named sketch. It also shows you a bunch of maps and folders and all sorts of random stuff that's like on your computer that it's found about it. But if you're working in something that, uh, that actually has like correlated files, so in the case of Sketch, Sketch has all these um, all these app documents, Sketch documents that I've opened over time. You know, it's like Photoshop files or Word documents. Then they show up in the side, and I can actually mouse over because uh, it doesn't reliably work for me going sideways. Oh no, you press Tab. That's the one. You you press Tab and suddenly you can jump down into these. So if I was going to do so, let's I was going to open that artsy open source thing I just opened, right? I type in Sketch. It would pop over. I press Tab. <laughs> now it doesn't work. There we go. There we go. It looks like you have to press up and down. Um, but now suddenly I can open it straight away. And what that meant was that I didn't have to jump through my folders. I didn't have to go to my documents, go and find the subfolder for this, and then eventually open that application through Finder. I just did the search, and because I found because it was recent in the application that I was actually working in, I could just like highlight it and click it straight away without having to jump through a bunch of different hoops. And like when you're working on a lot of small projects, then this saves a lot of time. Um, search is also good for finding specific files. Um, as well as like they're really trying to pitch it as like the thing that you can use for finding anything, so that includes like restaurants in New York City. Um, I don't really yeah. do that. <laughs> for me, when I type in an app, it just displays on the right um, info about the app, like the size of it, and it doesn't give you yeah. a list of files. So that depends on the app. So it depends on whether the app will give you that information. Got it. So like Safari, I imagine, might be able to do some of this, or it might not. Word may, and it may not. Numbers might. <laughs> Maybe only that one specific app does. No, it was working for me for Keynote, but it doesn't work for me for Sketch. For Great. Some reason. <laughs> so. But it depends on the app. It definitely depends on the app. Um, so I know. It's definitely, it's not, 
strictly the way that I normally open this, but it's norm it is definitely a useful way to speed things up. And all this stuff so far are things that are built into the operating system. But very soon we're going to get to the point where like, we'll talk about some of the things that I use to get to be faster. It's like you don't, you've never seen me open an app with Spotlight so far on today because I use a different tool to do that. Um, so let's get us back to where we were and what we got going. So, oh, that's one I haven't mentioned in here. Jumping between tabs. So you see me jumping between tabs like I'm a pro because I am a pro. <laughs> and the key commands for those are command and shift and then the two square brackets next to P. And they both indicate the direction that they're going. Um, that's, that's a really useful one when you've got tons of it. When, my, uh, when I, I gave my fiance my old computer and like day one was like, okay, you are mastering creating new tabs, new windows and jumping between tabs. And you are, you're not allowed to leave until, for like an hour until I can get you to do all of this via the key commands. Because if you're watching someone over their shoulders and they're like going over and clicking on that tab, it's like, no. <laughs> so, so yes, use this one judiciously. Jumping between the tabs is like super useful. Control tab works too. Does it? Oh, is that, is that? Yeah, I bet shift control tab does the other way too. Uh, command, option command option arrow. Command option arrow. <laughs> Does that just work specifically? So I, I, yeah, it works I, on like terminal too. No. Does it work in Safari as well? No. Not Safari. No. No. But still, that's an interesting one. Like, I don't mind whatever nomics you use, just as long as you use them. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, if you're living in Chrome, yeah, that's a good one. That makes far more sense than trying to remember this like obscure corners. Um, so there's three different options for jumping between tabs in Chrome, which to some extent like stresses the fact that like there's lots of different ways to do it, and I definitely don't have the tr one true answers for any of these things. Uh, so that's that's tabs. We've done Spotlight. Okay, so this is when I started jumping into like other places. Oh yeah, Spotlight. One thing I really do use Spotlight for a lot though is quick quick arithmetic. So like 23 plus 89 times 4. Um, and suddenly you get the value in there. Um, can't say it's like mind blowing, but it's really, really, really useful. Um, okay, so I made a note for Chrome, and I've been trying to avoid using this all the time here. In fact, I don't even know if I have it installed, so let's show you the installation process. So one of the things that you normally have to use a mouse for is like clicking on links, right? So you look at Artsy like this, and you want to click on shows and fairs. There's a thing that I use in uh, my Safari that has the same thing for Chrome that allows you to highlight every single link with a key command when you press a button. And it's amazing. Because from that point on, you net, you, you, you only, you're already looking at where you want it to be. So let's say you want it to go to magazine, right? You would, you would, you would be looking at magazine, then you'd press this button and then you'd press F because your eyes are already there so you knew exactly what you were going to click on. Uh, I'm just going to quickly install it so that I can actually show you. Um, it's a thing called Vimium, which is just a funny name and you just have to accept it. How do you do it for Safari? Vimari. So this is uh, artsy.net. Um, in this case, you just press F. And so I pressed F, and now, because I want to go to auctions, I can press F again, and it's clicked it. I press F again, and I want to go look at the learn more about partnerships, SS, and it's clicked it for me. I want to jump to the artworks, so I press F. And artworks is already there, and under F, which was actually the button I just pressed, so I would have just pressed F again. Um, and this shows everything, so it's like, you know, almost anything that is clickable, so I want to change my sort by, I press M. Uh, and hopefully it would do it. Oh, it's a mouse over, not a click. Um, so by, by using, like, uh, this is Vimium, you suddenly have the ability to jump to anywhere on a web page without ever having to use a, um, Mouse. That's the word. <laughs> See, already forgetting. 
Um, and that's, I think, I mean, that's, that's, that's super valuable because like a lot of the times like that's, that's where you use it most. Um, all right. I think I had a bit more in Chrome, but I think that was the key. No, that was the key. That was, that was the one F F inside any page. And so I'd been avoiding using it here in order to try and like get you to that point. But this is ideally from this point in how I'll be navigating between things. So another one that we all use all the time is good old Slack. And Slack has a few useful ones too. Um, so command K is probably the one that you should memorize. Um, when I'm like sitting down next to somebody and they're not using command K, that's when I'm like, nope. Don't click, go back, go back to that last thing and you have to use command K to get to where you want to go. Command K brings you up a list of all of the, every single person ordered by their importance to you at that point in time. So you see right now, Jessica, who I just recently complimented on her slacking, uh, has responded to me and has got two messages. So I could press enter and I could go in and I could see that. Uh, I could go to security by, and doing that entirely via the keyboard. So command K brings this up. You can do it to anyone. So you could say like Slack bot, you could say order, you could say see any channel that you want. Command K is the only thing you have to memorize for Slack. Everything else is all fun and games, but command K is what will change like the majority of your day. Um, other ones, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume you don't have too many Slacks, but they work like tabs, so you can jump between all your different slacks by uh, the same key command that you would in Chrome. Uh, what else did I have on the list? So, what, where's the channel I've been talking in? Mobile banter. All right, so you can write a message, sure. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen that you can get auto-completion based on putting in, uh, oh, I can't zoom in. Oh wait, I can zoom in, there we go. Uh, Whoa, whoa, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting there. All right, all right, all right. So if you place the colon, you can auto-complete your things. So if you wanted to, you know, you've probably already seen these, uh, red car. Uh, one of the useful things about that is uh, if you press up, it takes you back into editing the last message you wrote. So if you needed to make a quick edit, so let's say uh, red car is pretty good. You press up to go and edit it. And now you want to change the word pretty to, to very. So you would use alt to jump across, shift and alt to select it, and you'd write very, and then you press enter. And it's changed your message for you. And that is how you fix typos in, half a, in like under half a second. Up make the change, enter, gone away. So those two, those two are your like, those two are your, your key slack things. Up and command K, remember those. Cool, oh, slack. Uh, wait, I've got one more actually. Oh yeah, it's, this one's less, less mind blowing. But if you wanna do a lot of text, then you can use Alt and Enter, and it will allow you to do uh, line breaks instead of sending the message. There's sometimes like times when you have a really long thing to say that you want, still want to say in one time, um, but not too valuable in general. Okay. Shift Alt. Does it? Did I learn? Cool. Uh, okay, how long we got? How long is this meant to be an hour? Okay, then we're about to hit the advanced stage of our, of our, of our stuff now. The things that we're gonna start doing require like buying software. However, when you consider how much your time is worth, <laughs> maybe it's worth spending like $10 on something that makes your life a little bit easier every single day. Pardon? So I don't use size up, but I use something just like it. And that's what we're going to use next. So I use, uh, 
Oh, short cap. No, that's magic. We'll wait until we get there. Oh, wait, is it in here? Okay, cool. So, size up, I assume, acts a lot like Moom, which uh, I have this one key button that brings up this. So, it's, it's, it's brought, I brought up this multiple times, but I've done it too fast for it to show. Uh, and what it does is, uh, along the side here, we have a collection of things that I can do with my window. So the important ones to me are that like I can hold command and press left and right, and it will move it to half of the screen. So I would press the button that brings up this application called Moom, and then I'd bring press, I'd say like go across to that half of the screen, and I do the same with the other side. Or if I said wanted it full screen, I press spacebar, and this is like software that you have to buy that allows you to start manipulating your windows. But the moment that you have like two screens, then suddenly like trying to organize them all uh, becomes really valuable. It also does uh, this kind of neat feature where if you hover over the green button, you actually can define how big it should be in contrast to like a grid. So let's say you were you know you really wanted it to be like that, then. You can still do it by the mouse, too. It's not necessarily the only way to do it, but um, yeah, no, it's nice. So Moom is like essential for me personally. Uh, I have like two, two displays, and so I just want it all in like rows, basically. Um, but even when we were talking about our examples earlier, I would, I would just use Moom to like put one half of the screen here and another half over there, which makes it easy to like show two things at once and to, to, to work side by side. Um, so that was Moom, which is this really, really boring looking web page. Um, and I'm pretty sure, what did you call it, Snap It? Size Up. Size Up. Pretty sure Size Up should do a similar thing, right? Yeah, it's just keyboard shortcuts. Exactly, oh yeah, yeah, totally, yep. Whenever someone says the word window manager, I'm like, yep, I, this is exactly what it is. This is exactly the same thing as what I'm talking about here. And in fact, it has a similar kind of key commands. So anything like that, they call they are called window managers. They exist to manage your windows, to grids or whatever. Um, and that 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 saves a ton of time. This one will tell you how much time you've saved. Really? Because That's golden. So size up may actually be better than Moom, specifically because it'll tell you how much time you've saved. <laughs> uh, okay, and it, look at look at this website. It's bright green. It's lovely. Um, what does Cinch do? Ah, I see. <laughs> yep, perfect. So any of those things, they're all great. They're all really enhance your speed, and that's awesome. So take a look into window managers. Um, okay, so this one's a little bit advanced, but hey, like we're here, so we may as well go for it. So I use a thing called Shortcut, um, which. Hmm, I don't quite know how to describe it. Uh, it's probably better that I show you inside an app. I was using iMessage for this example, um, which I could probably do. I'm going to assume, yeah, there's nothing too bad in there. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so shortcut is the idea that you know what you're going to click on but it would require moving your mouse to it in order to actually click on something. So uh, the example here is, let's see what Ash has said to me, right? How would I get to Ash is a great question. Now, I know that Safari treats these people on the side as tabs, so I could actually use the tab shortcuts to jump between them all. Oh, danger. Um, <laughs> and so I could just jump left and right like that. But instead, normally what I would use is, I'd use shortcut, which is this thing that comes along the bottom, down here. And you can type whatever you want into it, and as long as someone has set up the accessibility, so like the things for blind people correctly, which hopefully most people have done, 
that you can jump to things based on their name. So if I said Ash, you'll see that it's like highlighted Ash Furrow, including the nice message. So I could have found that by type, like typing the word nice. And then like I can press enter and it jumps to them. If I wanted to go up to the details in the top corner, I can type, oh, that's what I want, I type in details and it would jump to that and tap it. I could do like I could do the same for red receipts, like pressing A and like jumping to that. And shortcut is like this is like advanced tools. I'm still getting used to using this, but it's it's for me it's the missing gap. Sometimes there's like periods where you really do have to use a mouse because things feel 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 quite unnatural to try and like jump around. Um, and shortcut gives me the ability to like really skip it go straight to a point. This is really useful in developer tools where you have a million tiny buttons everywhere around the system in order to just do one specific thing. Um, less useful in, like seriously not useful at all in Chrome, but really great in Safari where you can do the same thing for any link. So remember how earlier on we pressed F and it would highlight every link? In Safari, you would press shortcut and you could type the link in and it would click on the link instead. Um, question? What's Gmail? Are we talking about that? Sure. I don't want to move us off of our agenda. But. I don't have much for Gmail. So I used to use Gmail, the web page, and I've been, but I've been using the, 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 I've been using the app quite a lot instead, as you can see by all of my unread messages. Um, <laughs> Gmail, so, Gmail has uh, a thing where you can press, uh, what is it, command, there we go. If you hold shift and press this backslash, so if you just literally hit the, the question mark, you start to get the, the list of all of the actual key commands that it supports by default. This is standard across you know, as many web pages that try to act like uh, as, as apps as possible, um, which gives you then the ability to start like uh, start really working. So it looks like the way that Google, uh, that Gmail tries to handle a lot of this stuff is what we call uh, keyboard cording. So it's a lot like pianos where you'd have multiple things. Uh, you would do this with keys. So like to jump to your inbox, you would press G, which would start triggering your, oh, I'm already in my inbox, so that's not very useful. <laughs> like you would cord G with D to get to your drafts. Uh, and then like G with I to get your inbox, G with S assumably to get to your sent, G with, uh, I don't know, G with stuff, right? Um, they seem to do the same for a lot of the editing. So this is, the top one is all about composing and then the bottom one is all about like individual actions. So all of these will work without you having to press like command or uh, like all, none of them really seem to use Alt either, some of them use shift, but um, general standards are that, you see here you've got this little blue one, so the blue bar indicates your current selection, so you could press enter to jump in on them, um, like R would reply, um, the sort of key commands that you would maybe expect in, a, in, in an application generally seem to work in this kind of stuff, but uh, it's been so long since I've strictly use Gmail as a web page that I've forgotten most of them. No, that's helpful for just to know Chef. Yeah, exactly. The key the key for all this stuff is like, well, what are they? Um, so that's good. I what was the one that I used to find use most useful was like jumping between existing mails, so like to go left or right in your in your mailbox. Um, which might be K yeah, it could be K and J. Yeah, so K and J are really useful for going like up through your mailbox without going back to your inbox. That one's pretty good. So in that case, I jumped to the top one and then went through it. But uh, yeah, J and K are useful in a lot of places too. Um, so they're the, they're, the, they're the main ones for that. What else? Alfred. Okay. Um, all uh, right. Oh, Command M minimizes, uh, but the problem is it's actually really hard to get it back. Um, 
Normally you have to know the, the exact key command to find out how to bring a single window back, which I don't necessarily know at most of the time. I know how to do it for developer tools, but don't know how to do it for like Safari, for example. So as a rule of thumb, rather than minimizing, I'll just either well, tab it out or command H, which would hide. Uh, and so it stays kind of hidden the entire application uh, until you load it back up. So like that works pretty neatly when you've got multiple windows. So I've hidden all my Chromes. And until I open Chrome, until I alt tab to Chrome again, like click it and select the context, then it's just completely hidden from my desktop. Pretty useful. Um, okay, so we got shortcut, we got window managers. Uh, oh! Do you have a, like, a recommended scrolling shortcut? Spacebar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then shift and spacebar will go backwards because shift is the, the modifier, so uh, shift and spacebar will do that. Yeah. Yep. I've never found a better way of doing it other than command up and command down, which will take you to the top and the bottom. Um, like the, the, the ideal optimum is like you're, you're, you're spacing through and then you press F and then you jump straight into something when you see it. Uh, that said, I guess I've been using back and forwards without telling you what the key command for back and forwards is. I know, aren't I terrible? <laughs> so the way that like I think about back and forwards is, oh, I think in Chrome, the spec, oh, do you know the key commands for back and forwards in Chrome? Okay, I was checking to see if there were ones that other than that. So that's the standard. The standard is command shift and then the square brackets. Command shift is switch tabs. Oh yeah, exactly. The same, <laughs> almost the same as tabs, but without the shift. So you can jump with those two back and forwards in time. It's the same in every single app that has like the back and forwards metaphors. So you can jump between the tabs and then you can jump between the history by letting go of shift is generally how I try to do that. Um, okay. There's only two more things on my list. So there's a tool that I use called Alfred. Uh, so if I hide these, which brings up something just like Spotlight, but is it's optimized for maybe two things. One is like opening an app. So now, so this is actually how I would app open Sketch because if you see how long it takes me to open Sketch versus Sketch, uh, it's a little bit faster. But it also has the ability to uh, jump into Sketch. So I can press across uh, right and it would like give me more things that I could do with it. So I have a, like in my head, I just press that twice all the time and then I can jump to the last thing I edited. So this is what I do, and this is like exclusively how I jump between existing uh, files usually. If it's not in there, then I'll escape out and press it and just open it up manually. Um, but the other thing that it gives you is, is super powerful, um, and that is a, a clipboard manager. So like we had the window manager, which is like you normally have this thing, like windows, you move them around manually and you line them all up, that adds time. The other one that is like a real time bomb for me is um, keeping track of the things that you've copied and pasted. So in theory you only have one thing that you can copy at any time and it stays in this one place and then you put a new one out and it's gone away and then you've just got this one thing. But a clipboard manager gives you the history of all of the ones you've ever done. So this has a list of everything I've ever copied and pasted for the last few months and allows you to start searching through them. So if I wanted to find a link that I made on arts, that I, I, let's say I knew exactly that I shared an article with someone a while ago. So I had to copy it to paste it into their, into their like, iMessage. So I could search for artsy.net and suddenly I get a list of all of the artsy.net links that I've done, that I've copied in the last while. So that was, this is all in August and June, yeah. Um, oh, this is a shame because I've, because I've opened this up now, I can't open source this video. Damn. Um, but I can also do the same for like slash article. 
uh, and see if I had actually shared it from this computer, which I must not have because I haven't done it on that. Um, but this gives me the ability to, everything I've ever copied I, is saved in this app now. And that is what Alfred does for me. Alfred is, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful app. Oh, so well designed. It also lets you know how many times you use Alfred a day, so I seem to use it roughly 20-ish times. Well, this, I don't use this computer, it's not my main computer, so 20 a day is just like me messing around at home on iMessage or writing a blog post. So that's just like quickly doing stuff, which it seems to say is, well, I've been doing it since 2015, so that's a lot of times that it's saved. Um, so that's Alfred, which I use for clipboard management. Uh, which allows me to have all the history and to be able to search it back at any point in time. Um, that's pretty good. Yep, years of history on some of these things. Uh, and then finally, there's this one. This one specifically is mouse driven, but it's so useful that I want to stress that it's worth just bringing up anyway. Um, so, fresh. I've got fresh running. No. Okay. Fresh is an application that I use to show me the most recently changed files on my computer. So let's say I had taken a screenshot of something, so I command shift forward, and I dragged around this section of my screen. What it's done is it saved a file onto my desktop. If I wanted to, save, to send someone that file or to drag it into Slack, then I would have to open up Finder, open up my desktop, find it at the top of hopefully my pile of files, which I can show you how long that would take. So first I'd have to tap command tab to finder. There's no window, so I have to create a new window. It's not on the desktop, so I either have to press up and down until I get to desktop, which I can type too, I could type desktop. But I know that the I know the keyboard shortcut for desktop is command shift D. So that takes me Oh no, it's not set up on this computer. There it is, yeah, command shift D. And now suddenly I know that if I do Command it up, I'm at the top, and it's one of these, hopefully. There it is, it's this one. It's a lot of hassle. So instead, I can press F2. Uh, it doesn't, uh, this is just the one I set up. So instead, I press the fresh button, and it shows me all the files that have changed recently on my computer. So that includes like the time I was working on my notes here, <laughs> the Twitter app, uh, some code, and more importantly, the screenshot I just take, took a second ago. Uh, and that gives me the ability to pick up my mouse again and to drag it out into wherever I want. So if I wanted to put it into Slack now, I would be able to just drag it into Slack or whatever. Um, and this saves an untold amount of time. Uh, all the time when you like, uh, you've just downloaded a file off the internet and you want to send it to somebody or you want to open it quickly, then you would open fresh and uh, just press like go beautiful. So fresh, fresh is useful in the sense of like seeing what's new and like sending it somewhere else. Um, and that's my general gist of all the things that I wanted to cover, which, wow, there's only four more minutes, so I can cover anything else too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so more importantly, every single thing I have covered is on this web page, which I'll put out on a, on a team email because they all need it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so your notes should be useful, but if you need it, you can come back to this. Uh, but any of like the ones that people have brought up that I haven't covered are not in this, obviously. Um, and that's it. That's 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 keyboard shortcuts. Cool. So next time I'm over at your computer, I'll be telling you off if you're not using them.